We're going to be installing the Bilstein B14 coilovers on my BMW F30. The first step is to loosen the lug nuts on the wheels. I'm using the quick jack, so I'm going to break the lug nuts on every wheel before I lift the car off the ground. Now that the lugs are loose, you can lift the vehicle off the ground. With the car off the ground, remove the wheel in the corner that you will work on first. We're going to start with the rear. The first step is to remove the lower shock bolt. It's located right over here, the second bolt. But to get to the other side of that bolt, we're going to have to remove this splash guard. Removing the splash guard is easy. There are a couple 10 millimeter bolts holding it to the lower control arm. With the splash guard removed, we can access both sides of the shock bolt. Next, you will remove the upper shock bolts. They look like this. I have them removed here. Then you can press the shock to get it out of the uh, cavity here and then pull the shock out of the wheel well. With the lower control arm supported by a jack, remove the lower control arm bolt. With the bolt removed, you can now lower the jack and remove the spring. Remember to remove the upper spring cup. This will not be used on the new spring. The lower spring pad will be used on the new spring. The upper spring pad will not. Now we need to remove the top hat from the shock. To remove the top hat, you will need a socket that allows for a pass through of an Allen key to hold this center bolt here and you will need a way to turn that socket. Next we will install the spring. Now you can install the shock. Slide the shock in place and line up the bolts on top. Using a jack, raise the lower control arm so that you can put the control arm bolt back in place. With everything tightened up, you can lower the jack that's supporting the lower control arm. Reinstall the dust shield, then put on the wheel. Okay, moving on to the front. First, remove the sway bar end link, which I have already done here. To remove the sway bar end link, you will need a pass-through socket and a star torque bit. Next we will support the lower control arm with a jack. Now we can remove the spindle bolt. You can now remove these four bolts on the strut tower. Before we remove the strut, you will want to use a spindle spreader tool in the spindle back here. If you do not have a spindle spreader tool, you can use a 1 4th inch socket and turn it 90 degrees. It's recommended that you tape off your fender because it is difficult to squeeze the strut out of there without rubbing against the fender. To remove the strut, slowly lower the control arm by releasing the jack. With the strut removed, now we need to remove the top hat. You will need a pass-through socket and an Allen key. Before you remove the top hat, you will need to compress the spring with a spring compression tool. Now that I have the spring compressors on the coilover, I can now remove the top hat. With the top hat removed, we can now assemble it on the new strut. I like to use this rubber piece from the old strut to help even out the spring pressure when putting on the top hat. With the strut assembled, we can now place it back in the spindle and bolt everything up. With the coilover in the spindle, you can use a floor jack to raise the control arm and move the coilover up into place. Once the coilover is in place, bolt everything up and we're good to go. In a couple weeks, I'll post a video reviewing the coilovers. 
Initial impressions is that the ride is pretty rough. It did kill the body roll, but I'm going to play around with the ride height to see if I can get the uh, stock ride quality 